Welcome everybody to the EDM podcast. This is a show where we interview artists, producers, and industry experts, basically anyone who we feel can help you make better electronic music. My name is Aiden Russell. I am the general manager here at EDM Prod and I am a producer and DJ under the name Artsy. Now, as always, this episode is brought to you by EDM Foundations. If you've ever wondered how some producers manage to make such good music after one year of producing, EDM Foundations is the answer. This comprehensive course allows you to fast track your music production journey by practically making professional level music and getting every step along the way so you're not just understanding a bunch of concepts, but you're learning how to become a proficient producer from the ground up. So if you've been waiting too long to make the music that you've been wanting to, there's so many gaps in your knowledge and you're just sick and tired of spending too much time figuring out all this stuff, let us do it for you. Head to edmfoundations.com where you can learn more and sign up. Now, today on the podcast, we've got Black Caviar. Now, this was a super interesting interview. Now, Black Caviar is a duo, but it's kind of gone to more a one-man show headlined by Troy, who I interview in this episode. He dives into his journey with music production and how he came from a background playing in bands, punk, rock, and that sort of thing. We also dive into his release schedule and how he manages to put out such a high amount of high quality music over a variety of different labels, as well as fitting in self-releases. We also talk about a few of his new releases, including his most recent one out now on Tool Room Records called Tamed and how that opportunity came about. We dive a bit into their production process. And one thing I really got out of this interview is that It's very important to focus on the core elements in your track and not to overcomplicate things. And I think this is something Black Caviar does really well in his context of house music, achieving that nice original groovy feel while keeping the vocal and the core hook elements front and center. So I'm not gonna waste any more of your time. Let's jump straight into the EDM podcast with Black Caviar. What what I gotta do. Amazing. Welcome everybody to the EDM podcast. Today I am joined by Troy, who produces under the name Black Caviar. How you going, man? What's well, happening, man? Thanks uh, Thanks for wanting to hang out today. Oh, my pleasure. What time is it over there at the moment? Uh, it's 7.10 p.m. Nice, so nice. So just what time is it there? Uh, it's 9.10 in the morning here. So oh, I'm okay. in Melbourne, Australia. Yeah, so different, t- different sides of the world. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, that's cool. Because you're, are you in? Um, where are you based at the moment? Uh, I'm in New York City. New York, yeah, I thought so. Yeah, nice man. Yeah. Oh, so what? What have you been up to this week? Been doing much? Just, uh, just had a bunch of releases come out, and a um, bunch of more on the way. And yep. you know, it's just a lot of uh, preparation and trying to get things ready for the up and coming releases, and making sure the. The, the ones that, that have come out already, they're, you know, hopefully, you know, getting some love on playlists and, you know, doing yeah. everything you need to do and making sure they go in all the DJ pools. And, you know, there's just a lot of work involved. So uh, just been just been busy, man, you know, but I, I'm, I'm happy to be busy. I, I, I you yeah. know, after the lockdown and, you know, what we went through, you know, so it's like I, I just I, I'm not taking it for granted, you know, totally, man. Yeah, it's uh it's definitely nice. Um, like I've been in a very fortunate position as well, like during lockdown where I've been able to still do music and this kind of stuff. So yeah, definitely is uh nice to be busy. I agree. I agree. Yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah, man. That's sick. Uh, awesome, man. So f- I guess what we'll start with is for those of you who maybe haven't heard of you, I, I think at this point, a lot of people out there have probably definitely heard your music which we'll get into later in the episode but for those of you who haven't heard the name black caviar do you just want to um dive into your background as an artist and and in music for a bit just for us yeah yeah sure so uh i've been um playing in different various bands my whole life really you know started Mm -hmm. as a teenager playing um in like punk and hardcore bands uh metal bands and um so when i when i moved to new york city um 15, like about 15 years ago, um, mm. I really started getting in with some DJs and um, I started just DJing in the city. And yep. um, my partner, Jared, uh, in Black Caviar, 
he uh, was living in the city as well. And we just kind of, uh, we were like, oh, let's, let's, let's make some music. And uh, it kind of started out as sort of, um, I don't know, not just not really a goof, but, you know, didn't really take it all that seriously, you know, because yeah. we, we kind of were like, we've done music. We've, we've been out there, we've toured. So let's just literally just do it for the fun of it. Yeah. And um, really kind of not try to follow trends or just, you know, just do what we want to do. And yeah, yeah. Um, and this is kind of like right when Spotify started becoming, you know, sort of, you know, something that was people used every day. And it was like, wow, this is really cool. Like, I can't believe we, we could just make a tune and throw it up there and, and people out of the world hear it. You know, like we kind of mm. came from the school of like, you had to like make a CD and you had to like physically get it to somebody. Yeah, to hear your yeah. music, you know, so um so that's what how we kind of got involved and started in it and it, it just kind of took off from there and then uh we were just self-releasing stuff and you know not really expecting anything and then uh one of our songs coco started to kind of start to move in the uk and um my partner my partner jared was working at republic records at the time mm -hmm. and uh they were basically like well you know you know, we were getting offers from other labels and they're like, well, you, you know, to Jared, you work here, so you should sign it here. And, you know, so that we, we figured that out and it was like, yeah, this is the best place to go with this. Sure. Um, with Casablanca Republic. And then yeah. um, we put out a bunch of records with them and uh, yeah, that's kind of how it really sort of got going. Cool. Um, yeah. So that, that initial connection then with the record label was kind of your entry point into like the world, I guess for you, electronic music and house music and that kind of thing, right? Kinda. I mean, I loved raves and 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 dance music and house music and jungle yep. and drum and bass. Um, nice. You know, back in the day, I was going to raves, um, and it was kind of like my balance really was like, you know, I'd go to like a hardcore punk show one on a Friday night and then a rave on a Saturday night, and yeah. uh, I just really fell in love with dance music, you know in high school and, and coming out of high school. Um, and then I, I don't know what it just, something sort of clicked where it was like, well, I you know, I guess, it, you know, a lot of it was like playing in bands, you know, when you're in like uh, suburban areas, you have a garage and, um, but when you move to New York city, I mean, like, this is it like that, like, this is my apartment. That's one wall. Yeah. And there's another wall. That's literally it. Like, yeah. that's all I got. Yeah. <laughs> and, totally. uh, so it's like, you can't have a drum set here. You can't have an amp here. So, you know, you just start messing around on your computer and you're like, oh, this is this is pretty cool. Like, yeah, like, I yeah. Can, you know, so that's that's kind of how it came about. But I, I, I do love I have loved dance music my my entire life. So that's cool, man. I, I um, suppose one thing I wanted to ask you is it seems like that your history with dance music has kind of come out and is very inspired by a lot of like the UK dance music stuff. Was that like definitely an inspiration for you? in those early days, like you mentioned, you know, you're into house and, and jungle and drum and bass. I'm a huge drum and bass head, by the way. So. <laughs> oh, right <laughs> yeah, on. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah definitely. Um, you know, UK, the UK house, Chicago house. Yeah. Um, you know, like UK garage, you yeah. know, like, so, um, that's a huge influence. And then, you know, just being in New York city and, and, and growing up near New York city, um, yeah. you know, this hip hop is just, just, literally ingrained in my DNA. So, For sure. um, yeah. you know, like it, it just kind of came naturally the idea of, of kind of just putting all these different things together, you know? Yeah, totally. That's awesome, man. Yeah. Um, yeah, I guess one thing with that as well, and this has kind of been a more recent, I guess, occurrence to just to switch things up a bit. So you've been growing a lot, and you've had a lot of releases come out and we'll dive into a few of those releases in a second. But uh, one thing you mentioned before we actually started recording is that you have your partner, Jared, who you've made music with, but now you're kind of taking the reins and kind of being the front man of Black Caviar yourself. I think a lot of people out there who are listening to this podcast probably are in duos or, you know, groups of producers or DJs and stuff like that. Um, you know, what have those dynamics been like for you uh, kind of taking the reins uh, yourself now? Well, basically, you know, what happened with the lockdown, um, mm. like when, when we locked down, it, it was basically like, like, what do we do? Like we had a whole tour booked. We had, you know, yeah. like our, our 2020 summer was slammed and uh, it, it got, things got a little, little like a little strange because, you know, 
it was like, you know, he decided, you know, we were both living in the city here and he decided to move back towards Philadelphia where he's from. Right. And um, at that time, you know, like I said, this is a small spot. So I actually went yeah. down to Florida and uh, yeah. so it was kind of like, what do we do now? So we, we actually learned how to write music on Zoom, which was right. pretty interesting. Um, yeah, it would be. It, it, it's, it's, you know, it's just something so cool that you didn't think of just because like, you know, the idea of sit, being able to sit there. I mean, you could, the technology was there, but it wasn't up in everybody's face like it is now. Yeah. You know? So, so we, we started writing music that way. And then um, basically when things started opening back up earlier this year, you know, we got, we started getting offers for some dates and he had, he had a baby on the way that just got here this summer. So oh, cool. he's like, Hey man, like, you know, I, I'm going to have a newborn and uh, I just kind of want to chill at home and, and, and write music in my underwear and, and yeah. uh, you know, and, and I, 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 you know, I don't, I, I can't blame him for it, you know, like, yeah. especially having a newborn, you know, yeah. and um, he's, he's toured his whole life. He's been playing in bands since he was probably 14, 15, like literally wow. active band. So Crazy. he's kind of burned out on the road. Um, yeah, fair enough. Yeah. And you know, it, 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 it does wear on you, man. Like, you know, even like with the, we have a black caviar has a, a decent schedule, but it's still, you know, it's, it's not too crazy and it just, it does wear on you. So, yeah, you know, I, I understood where he was coming from. So I, I didn't, I didn't really mind just kind of stepping up, but he's still involved. We still write music together. We, yeah. we write, you know, a couple times a week. Cool. Um, and he's very much involved on the music side. Awesome. Awesome. Have you yeah. found like, cause I know in some duos, like, the, the cool thing with duos, I think, as well, is that you both have different strengths a lot of the time and you can kind of complement each other. Yeah. Have you found, I mean, from like, I guess, the more front end side of things, have you found any like challenges that you've like new skills you may have had to learn or is it at the moment pretty much like, you know, are you, are you comfortable with like being the front man and that kind of thing and it hasn't been that much of a challenge? Like how's that side of things been for you? Uh, it's been pretty good. I mean... As far as DJing goes, I I was the DJ. He never really DJed. Okay, uh, yeah. So you know he 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 didn't really particularly enjoy it that much. I mean, you know, like when when you crush a show, obviously you love that. But yeah, yeah. Kind of like everything around it is just kind of you know it, it was a lot for him, and so yeah, I I didn't mind being the DJ. You know, it's it's I I personally like being in a photo better with somebody else. You know, I I, I sure. feel it's always kind of weird to me to be like. Hey, I'm the guy. I'm yeah, the, I know what you I'm mean. Black caviar. You know, it's kind of cooler if it, it looks t like a duo. Yeah. But, you know, that's not the case right now with us. So, you know, yeah. it is what it is, you know. Totally, man. Yeah, no, that's cool, man. I, I do think, like, um, you know, I would get the, the being in a photo thing, like, by yourself. It's definitely, a, I think it's almost like a mental skill you have to learn in some ways like yeah. having to, you know, be comfortable to getting photos, especially if that's not who you are comf like naturally. Some people jump into that and that's fine and they love it. But I know I'm, I'm a bit similar in that way. <laughs> for sure. Yeah. I, it's just, it's, it's just a weird when the attention's all on you, you know, like, yeah, you know, like it's all about you and exactly the way you look. And, you know, that's another thing he really just, you know, it, and it, it's a hard thing to do, you know, it's like, Mm. to be that that kind of center of attention and he, he does not like attention on him so uh yeah but it's yeah it's all good you know yeah that's cool man now it's interesting to hear a little bit into that into that dynamic and that kind of thing um but yeah also cool to hear that he's still helping with the writing side of things and i think a lot of people who are out there who maybe you know are in similar positions maybe they do have families and stuff like that like there are still ways you could be involved in that kind of dynamic too, where you're still able to produce and write in that capacity, but you know, you don't have to necessarily be um, the, the guy, you know, I think that's why a lot of things like ghost production as well have a bit of um, appeal to them, I suppose, because then you can just do the production, but um, yeah, I'm sure a lot of, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm sure there's a lot of producers that I'd probably say most producers probably have somebody else that they, they kind of, you know, mm bounce things off of and, and kind of help uh dial in a sound you know that i mean but you know there are a lot of guys look that you know don't get it wrong like like from what i understand like skrillex is like hands-on start to finish like yeah he does it all you know so there are guys that do that but uh i personally prefer somebody to bounce ideas off of. Um, yeah 
I, and I, I appreciate, especially with my partner, you know, like shooting on an idea. And then he's like, what if we did it like this? And you're like, oh, yeah. Shit. yeah. You know, like, and that, that kind of stuff is always kind of, you know, I, I would, I would take that over just doing it by myself, like the production music wise, you know? Yeah, totally. I, I think as well, a lot of people have a lot of weird like things with, with like working with others or, or stuff like that. It's like, like I, I, I mean, maybe I used to be a bit like that, but it's like, I think there's so much more creative potential that comes out of like, you know, bouncing ideas off or, you know, going to your friend's place and seeing if they could like add a couple of things extra into the tune that you hadn't thought of. Like, you know, I think that's fine. Like, I know, like, I'd probably say the majority of people who are making music do that. And I think there's this weird stigma sometimes that, like, that's that's wrong or that's bad. It's like, no, it's like, that's how music's made. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. 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 Um, that's cool, man. Moving forward a bit. One thing I wanted to ask you is with your release schedule, you kind of mentioned a bit earlier. Um, you, you do seem to put out quite a lot of music uh, on a pretty consistent basis. And, working with a lot of different labels as well as self-releasing. Um, how do you sort of go about managing that schedule? Like, do you want to dive into that side of things a bit? Yeah. Well, you know, the one thing that was, you know, came out of the pandemic that was pretty good is we were pretty productive. I mean, you know, yep. you're just, you're just looking for like, um, you know, some sort of like normalcy and, and, and ability to like, um, you know, just do, do something with that time. And so we were very fortunate that, that we were like just reaching out to people, reaching out to vocalists. And, um, so we were fortunate to get a lot of ideas together and then it's just starting to like roll them out, you know, and kind of, and that's, that's what it's been doing. And that's, you know, we're going to do that through the end of the year. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's really a numbers game. A lot of it, you know, where you, you, you put out a release and then, you know, it does okay. You put out another release and it does okay. And then you put out another release, it does better. And then the other ones start to bump up. And yeah. so, you know, it's just keep putting out consistent and quality as quality as you can get it material. Yeah. Um, I think that's, that's extremely important. Um, I know a lot of guys that just kind of focus on one song and it's like, you know, that's cool, but like you're putting all your eggs in one basket. You know what I mean? Like we, sure. we, when we would do that, we would put out a song. We're like, this is it. We got it. And it, the song would just not do anything. And you just go, oh, like, yeah, okay, like, what now? So, you know, it's just kind of like make focus on a song, make it as great as you can make it, send it out. What's the next one? You know? And, yeah. And, uh, so that's, that's kind of the mentality. Yeah. No, that's cool. I do think a lot of it, it is kind of like an older school mentality, like where you can just get one tune out. And that is, and you know, that does happen sometimes. I mean, if you yeah. do have, have the right promotion and marketing around it, I mean, but you can still do that and it doesn't go as well as you thought it would. And yeah. then it's like, you do have to have, you know, a pipeline of tunes that you're able to put out at any point. Um, without and it, and it doesn't really sacrifice quality i i personally think like i think the the you know months or whatever that you put into the last tiny bit of a tune no one's going to really tell anyway like i think at a certain point you just got to put it out and as you say move on to the next one right yeah and hope for the best man and, mm. and just you know like you know i i personally obsess over music before it comes out i mean i you know like yeah I, I just, I literally nitpick my partner. He's not, you know, as long as it's sort of in a structure and it sounds good to him. Yeah. Good. You know, I, I really like, you know, I'll nitpick every little thing and like up to like, okay, it's, I have to turn it in today. Like it needs to be yeah. an end of day. And you're like, there it is. And then I'll even, you know, I'm a neurotic mess. Like I'll, a song will come out. And if there was like one little thing that bothers me, like I zone in on it and I can't focus on anything else. And then it's, oh. you know, it's, it, it's, 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 it's hard, to, you know, because it's like you're giving birth and yeah. you're, you're putting it out there and it's just like, you know, so I don't know, man. So, yeah. yeah, no, that's cool. Um, I do, I do, yeah, I do think that that's, it is just the reality of the um, industry we're in now is like um, attention is moving very fast onto the next song. Like, so you, you kind of need to keep up with that. Um, yeah, definitely think it's very important. And yeah. do you, do you, how many like labels are you working with at the moment? Oh man. Uh, well, we just had one come out late last month on ultra, um, yep. so called wolf that we did with cook thugless. Awesome. Um, 
and uh, Sad Money, and it's 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 a you know a heater. Um, it's really good. And then we we put out a song nice. on Tool Room, and uh, we have one coming out at the end of the month on Nervous, which I'm really excited about. It's a, a collab with your favorite Garcon. Um, the awesome. He's from Italy, and he, he's like a garage house, but he's just he's super on the come up, and his his, his stuff is really cool. Yeah, and then we we have another release coming up at the end of the year on uh, Defected D for Dance is their their imprint awesome. label. So, uh, yeah, and it's just you know I don't you kind of see like where stuff sort of lands, you yeah. know where what what you know like we, we did the song that we did on Nervous, um, you know it's kind of it's kind of raw, it's very kind of simplistic, um, but the vocal is just fire, and uh, yeah, you know it just kind of it like nervous just felt like the right home for it as you know, and it's, so you just kind of see like, Hey, this would sound really good here. And if they're interested, then you, you go with it. Um, one totally. of my favorite labels of all time is tool room. I love tool room. Yeah. And, um, when, when we started black cab air, it's been a personal goal of mine to get a record on tool room. And we finally just released, um, uh, a song on, on tool room. So, um, I'm just super stoked about that. I just hope Congrats. that there's, there's yeah. many more to come. Thanks man. Yeah. Super yeah. stoked. So that's so cool. Yeah. I, I think, um, like there is, you know, and, and one thing you do as well, which is really cool is you do do a bit of self releasing as well. Um, you know, I, I really like your approach to releasing cause I feel like you can keep a consistency up, you know, by releasing on labels. And then, you know, if there isn't a label release for like months, you can fill that with like a, a self release and something like that. Yeah. So that's a really cool benefit of the modern, like, I guess, musical landscape we're in now is like, it is possible to, both work with labels that can push your music out to new audiences, but also you can personally as an artist, keep up your release schedule. I think that's awesome. I, yeah, I think it is too. I, I think, uh, you know, it really kind of takes, you know, it, it's, and labels are good, man. Like, you know, there's mm. especially like, you know, like, you know, there's, I'm sure you've heard horror stories of dealing with major labels, but yeah. you know, like to get in their pipeline and just the power that a major label has, like, like universal Republic records, mm. you know, we did some stuff with them like you know like it, they just get it like you put out a song and it, you know even if it doesn't do good it's getting into like oh here's a netflix show here's an nbc show that wants it here's a this kind of show that wants it this and you're like this movie one now wants your song you're like whoa like yeah <laughs> okay like you know and and, and that's so that's a, a really good part about being on a, on a major if if they you can get into that jet stream which is definitely hard um but yeah like there's something really cool about if you have a dope tune, you know, just going on like distro kid or tune core yeah. and, and uploading it, boom, just put it out in the universe, you know? And yeah, you know, we, the, one of the, like, uh, I think like the fourth or fifth song that we ever put out, um, we self-released it. It was just like a kind of a goofy song. And then like all of a sudden it starts like trending on, on TikTok, and you're like, Oh shit. You know, like, um, these yeah. are like, you know, it's a self-release song. So, you know, you know, if that's, that's our money. So, uh, you know, th there's, there's something very cool about that. And, uh, people, the people that figure that out are, uh, it's, it's pretty cool that the power is in their hands, you know? Yeah. And as you mentioned, you keep a hundred percent, like, I mean, obviously there'll be a fee or whatever you pay to distribute it, but yeah, like that is another really cool thing. So if it does blow up, yeah, you don't, you're not splitting with a label. Um, yeah. So I'm curious as well, though, like when it comes to like the promotional and marketing side of things for your releases, like obviously sometimes that kind of more falls on the label. But do you think there's anything that have happened in that realm with your tunes that have made some of them so successful? L marketing from a label side? Yeah. Or, I mean, or or if it's one of your self-released tunes that you've um done like anything you've noticed that's kind of pushed your tunes out to, I don't know, a bigger audience or something like that. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's when, when labels can get it into good playlists, Yeah, you know, I mean, that's, that's kind of like, and you know, get it in, get into this lane, get into this lane, get into this lane. And then you can just kind of see it, you know, moving, um, you know, and that's, that's on, on some level, it's a lot harder if you self release, you know, you have to have sure. some connections and, 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 ask friends to, you know, add it where, you know, the labels, it's just kind of, that's their, that's the machine, you know, yeah. that's the machine that they know how to slide it into. So, um, yeah. you know, there, there's, there's definitely a, a payoff with having a label help you with, you know, push it. Yeah. For sure. hundred percent. I agree. Yeah. I, I run a label as well. So 
Um, I oh, definitely right know the the power of like, you know, especially because not every not all of us as artists do want to like do the promotional side of things. That's where a label can come in and really help. Like they do, they've spent the years or however long curating those contacts so they can send it to the playlists. They know exactly. that you have to give it time when you send it to Spotify so they can actually consider it for their like editorial playlists and stuff like that. So there's, it's, it's once again, it's like getting help um, with things that, you know, you don't have to do everything on your own. Like, I think that's a, that's a huge, huge benefit. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Um, one thing you mentioned as well, that like is a cool thing that can happen with labels and, and promotion and that kind of thing is like placements on movies, you know? Uh, and one thing I wanted to talk to you about was specifically um, when your tune with Blackway was featured in um, the Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse movie, which is a pretty pretty big achievement. Uh, I think yeah. it's 150 million streams. Like, that's huge. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah basically, so how that came about was, um, again, just being signed to Republic Records, Casablanca Republic. And mm. uh so, you know, we put out a couple of songs um, and, you know, like we, we started out Black Caviar as, as you know, dance music, house music. Yeah. And uh, um, so with like a hip hop influence and then, you know, we got asked to do to. So basically what they do, you know, when, when you do a, a movie like this is they they go to the label and they say, who, who are your new producers? Who, you know, and they go, OK, uh, uh, Black Caviar, Black Way. And they, they do a couple, you know, diff- they put a couple people together. And yeah. they're like, okay, write this kind of song. This is exactly what we want it to be. And so, yeah, yeah okay. And, um, you know, most of the time it doesn't result in anything, you know, yeah. like you just take that swing to say that you tried it and, uh, you know, it, most of the time it, it doesn't work out. And somehow this way, this time it worked out, you know? Damn. And, um, so yeah, they basically came to us. We did the track. We, we worked on a track with Blackway and, we got in the studio with him and we, you know, we put an idea together and this was probably, um, you know, like January, February. And then like we, we sent in the track and then we don't hear anything for like months. And we're like, Oh, we're like, Oh, we guessed that they just passed on the track, you know? Mm. And then probably like July, we get a, we get a, a call an email and they were like, Hey, we're using the track and it's in this part of the movie. We need you to write another part for it. So we said, okay. So we write a part and like, well, they sent us this like very like primitive looking uh, video with the music to it. And it's like just pencil sketches. Yeah. And me and my partner were like, yo, this is, this is going to be terrible. This movie's going to be awful. <laughs> like, <laughs> but we're like, we're committed, whatever. Like Spider-Man, like that's pretty cool. Like whatever. Yeah. So we, we, we do another part. They say, great. And so they, we don't hear anything. We don't hear anything again. And then we're like, it's getting like, we knew it was like uh, Christmas, uh, uh, Thanksgiving release here. And yeah. um, they were like, basically like the end of October, they said, yeah, your song's in the movie. It's in this pinnacle part. And eBay and McDonald's, are, you're going to be in their commercial, like starting next week. And like- what? <laughs> we, we didn't even like we didn't even like finish the mastering we didn't even like like say okay here it's final we just gave them the stems and they they just finished it and uh wow, so okay. yeah that was that was wild that was a, a very wild thing to have happen yeah it was just kind of like let's just do it try it and it just happened to work that's that's yeah. incredible and i think it's also encouraging because you can put something out and you can try something you can send someone something try and get a release or whatever and sometimes you can be like oh they don't like it blah 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 or they're not really sure what's happening but sometimes you just need time and it will happen i think that's that's really cool to see even though it was a long time between the initial opportunity and the actual result like it ended up actually happening which is crazy that's awesome yeah and then i mean not only that but then the the movie ended up being a incredible incredible movie that is yeah. like that will go down in history as like you know an amazing animated movie you know yeah. so to be part of it's just wild it still doesn't even feel real you know like we, we've been it we've you know it's been a couple of years since it's come out and it's yeah it's still like i, I can't believe that this happened <laughs> like, wow. this isn't yeah. supposed to happen so it is pretty cool that's cool man was yeah. it kind of fun doing something yet yeah, i guess more in the hip-hop realm trap kind of realm for that 
obviously that was part of the, what they wanted for the sound of the movie, I'm assuming, but was it fun to experiment with that? It was. Yeah. And it was yeah. cool because like, you know, you, you, you're, you're almost like, it's like very hip hop. Yeah. Like hip hop trap. And then like trying to figure out a theatrical element to it. You mm. know? Like that's something that like we have never done. Like I, I, it's just wild to even like, think like, Oh, like, Oh, this is even something I, I would be even able to do, you yes. know, like, you know, you listen to movies and you hear how they're scored and you're like, that's cool. But like, yeah, I don't know. Like I wouldn't know how to do that, you know, yeah. but uh, you know, you kind of figure it out and, and luckily they, they really kind of steered us in exactly what they wanted. And um, so yeah, it's wild. It's wild that it, it, it worked out the way it did. Yeah, man. That's cool. Oh, awesome. Um, yeah, and I suppose like with your other releases, obviously you're known for kind of having this this solid house sound. Um, and I, one thing I really like about your sound as well is you do have like these different kind of takes depending on the tune. You have like a core sound, but you have different takes on that sound like depending on the tune or whatever. Um, I guess what I wanted to ask was like, what would you describe your your sound as as a producer or your guys' sound as as a as a duo? Uh, it's pretty, yeah, it's a good question. And it's, it's something that's kind of hard to define. And it's, 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 it's kind of a blessing and a curse at mm. the same time, really, because, you know, cause a lot of times people want to know, like, what's your lane, like where yeah. you fit, you know? And, uh, um, it's, it, it's, it's hard, especially, you know, with the song, you know, that we did, what's up danger that was in Spider-Man. Like, you know, if you're, you're trying to brand yourself as house music yeah. and then you do a hip hop track and it's just kind of, and then, and then it's, it's really big, you know, and it's really successful. And you're like, do we try to mimic that success or do we try to keep doing what we're doing? And <clears throat> I think, you know, the one thing with, with black caviar is like, you know, just we follow our art and just whatever we, we feel like doing. And if it's a hip hop track, if it's a, yeah, sort of a house track. Um, but I guess, you know, if you have to figure out how to put it in a lane, I'd probably, you know, the easiest way to describe it is probably like Chicago house meets uh, New York city hip hop. Uh, with yeah. like a little bit of Latin rhythms mixed in there. Yeah. Uh, I love Latin music. So, um, so yeah, I think that's probably, I don't know if that gives you a, 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 as clear of a definition, but it's probably how I would try to describe it. Totally. Cause I can hear like, yeah, the classic house influence, like on a lot of your records, but yeah, in that like kind of more clean modern context as well, like good production, you know, it's definitely keeping that original groove and feel to it, which I, yeah, really like, man. It's cool. Um, Thanks, yeah, awesome, man. And in terms of like, um, latest releases as well, you've had your, um, remix of Julia Rizik's Dumb. Uh, that was your yeah. latest one, right? Yeah. Latest um, remix. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. How did that opportunity come around and stuff? Yeah. Uh, well we did some, um, we put out a couple releases this year, uh, uh, and, um, on create. And so basically, yeah. um, th- uh, she had put out a release with create and she was looking for remixers and, um, we heard the track and they, they said, well, this, you know, would you want to do this? And I was like, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, she's, it's a really amazing vocal. Uh, yeah. and, um, you know, she's super talented. So, you know, it's, so, you know, sometimes remixes are, are they're, they're, they're tough, man, because like, you know, they'll want like a house song remixed that's like you know they want to turn into a house song but it's like a 98 bpm and it's a lot of words and there's it's it's sometimes it's just a mess you know remixing stuff where but you hear sometimes you hear a song and you go like oh yeah like yeah i could i could flip this really well and that was Mm -hmm. one of those songs and so it, it really came together well just because it's it's an incredible vocal um yeah but yeah that that was a lot of that was a lot of fun to do yeah it's super she's um she's got an incredible voice and she's got a a big future ahead of her for sure yeah awesome man um in terms of the production side of things is there any anything you can tell us about like how the writing process for that remix was like any fun things you tried on that record or um you know basically you, you know, you throw the the vocal in and you kind of get it to a grid and, you know, you yeah. just kind of, you start grooving with a bass line and some drums and, yeah. um, you know, just kind of, you know, just some chords, you know, just kind of kept it a little, you know, pretty straightforward. Um, cool. Because, yeah. you know, like on a song like that, you know, the vocal, you just, you let the vocal shine, 
Yes. You, know, you, you kind of like, that's one thing as a producer that as time goes on, you learn to maybe not do so much. Maybe, maybe you take a few steps back. Like mm. um, one of our, our songs that came out um, uh, August uh, collect check on Dim Mac records. Um, yeah. We got this vocal and um, her vocal was so good. It was so good. And yeah. so just, they're so rich in, in texture and, yes. and in just the delivery and everything. So, you know, like you could make it go crazy and put all sorts of crazy things in there, or you just kind of like step back and just let that vocal shine just a little bit more and just make sure what's around it is, is just as clean and as good as you can get it. Yes. Um, and yeah, with, the, with the remix, it was very similar to that. Like when the, when the vocal is that good, you know, you just kind of, step back, let it shine and just, you know, do your thing sort of in the cut, you know? Mm, that's invaluable advice. I think like you really do need to, even if you're not remixing or even if you're not working specifically with a vocal, whatever the main element or the hook in your tune is like letting that kind of be the thing that carries a tune rather than trying to compensate with all these little extra things. Like sometimes, yeah, yeah maybe there is a bit more detail that a tune calls for and that's fine. But I yeah. still think regardless, like letting that main element just shine and, and everything else around that kind of supports it rather than distracts from it. I think that's absolutely key. Yeah. And I, you know, some of the, the best producers that I love that I look up mm. to, it's like, you know, they can strip it down to like literally nothing. But what what is what is hitting is the exact right sounds. Yes. And, uh, you know, that's that there's a real art to that, because, you know, when, when I started producing, it was like just pile as much on as you can and just make yeah. stuff going on. And, you know, where it's like, no, you don't have to do that. You know, like, yeah, like some of the dopest producers ever just they keep it. They keep it, you know, keep it in a little more simple, you know. Totally. I think that's why hip hop's really cool as well, because it is like by nature more like, you know, really focused on just a really good beat and, you know, a really good vocal, uh, really good like rap, you know, I think there's a lot yeah. that can be learned from that. And, and you know, there's a reason it's like the biggest genre in, in the US, I think, at the moment, like, you know, because of that simplicity, it works so well. Um, yeah. So there's a lot to be learned. learned yeah, from that. definitely. Like, with, uh, you know, with our stuff. Um, yeah. You know, I'd probably say two of the biggest influences we have are, are Pharrell and Timbaland. And, uh, awesome. you know, like those guys are, you know, you listen to their songs and it, again, it's just like, like with some Timbaland tracks and Pharrell tracks, like, like sometimes it's like three or four noises, you know, sounds, yeah. you know, like, so it's like, there's just nothing there, but it's what they have there is just so dope. And exactly. uh, it's, a, it's a hard thing to achieve, but if you can figure it out, you know, it's, it's pretty cool. That's that's awesome, man. Um, I suppose in general, with your uh, production inside of things, is there any um, like like you mentioned, you kind of work back and forth with Jared over Zoom and stuff like that. And I'm assuming when you can work in person, you do you do try to yeah. um, sometimes as well. But is there like one particular thing you feel like you have a strength, and then he has a strength, and those two kind of things work together? Um, like what would be yours? Do you feel? Um, that's tough, you know, cause I think, and you know, cause I, I him and I really kind of complement each other pretty well. Yeah, sure. Like there's, there's times, you know, that, you know, he, he figures something out just t times that I figure something out. So it's, it's not, you know, I, I definitely think he's, um, he's really good with like, left turns and songs sure um, so you're heading down this direction you know and you have if you have three minutes of this same direction you mm. know it gets a little you know you start getting two minutes in and it starts getting a little boring so it's like let's yep. go over here for a second oh we're gonna bring it right back you know and yeah you know it's kind of like flips that just kind of like you know and then when you come back to it it just makes it that much more oh you know so um he's really good at those he's good at like let's flip it in this direction now and then we'll bring it back so um yeah. well yeah then maybe you know I, I i guess i tend with with our songs i tend to find more of the vocalists i i, I tend to find yeah. the top lines or vocalists to work with yeah so that's maybe where you know maybe i'm I, I shine a little bit a little bit more but at the end of the day like sure you know like i said it's just really good to have a partner that you can 
yeah. play stuff. Cause you know, I, I, there's been times I've had, I've presented things like, Hey, listen, to this top line. He's like, nah, man, that's whack. Like, like, yeah, you're, you're, yeah. Well, yeah, of course, man. Like, and you just go, okay. Yeah. You like, you're right. You know? So it's, it's kind of good to have the, those like checks and balances, you know? hundred percent, man. Now that's yeah. awesome. Um, very good advice. Very good advice. And, and yeah, interesting to hear, um, the like ways you guys kind of have, yeah. Compliment each other pretty well. I think, as I mentioned earlier, it is nice to have someone to, uh, yeah, who can do those things you don't necessarily think of 100%. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Awesome, man. And you've got a few things coming out pretty soon, slash by the time this episode comes out on Octo- in October, there'll be a few um, new tunes out. So you've got one tune coming out on Tool Room, as you mentioned, pretty soon. Do you want to tell us, um, what's what? can you tell you the name of that one yet or is it still under wraps? Oh, yeah, no, it's called Tamed. Um, Tamed, awesome. And uh, so uh, d- during the lockdown, we linked up with um, this, uh, this, he's an Irish, he's from Ireland, uh, this awesome. guy, Ryan S. And okay. he's, um, he just has this incredible, soulful, rich uh, house voice. And um, yeah. we, we worked on a couple tunes with him and we did, we released a song earlier this year called Money Money. And uh, so we put that out on uh, Defected D for Dance, uh, Defected's imprint label. Yeah. And um, it was cool. And, we, and then we, we started working on another song and um, it, it was, uh, we got it into a good place. And then it was just kind of like, it was still missing something. He's like, hey, you know, um, one, of my, one of my friends, this guy, Mark Mainland, um, he's great. He, he produces under... Um, uh, this this name called Frequency Freak R F R E Q, and oh, yeah. um, so uh, he he took the track and just kind of like really just made it made it like made it a house like just had that uh, mm. that tool he really gave it that tool room feel and yeah. uh, so so we were very grateful uh, to work with him on that and 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 release on on tool room so yeah, yeah that's out and. Um, so check that out. And then we have a song coming out um, in next week um, yeah. on Nervous Records. And uh, it's a collab with um, this guy uh, named Your Favorite Garcon from Italy. And, yep. he, you know, he's, he's an up and coming guy. It's just he's just doing some really sick house music and uh, very, very kind of like stripped down, very raw. Yeah. Very um, kind of almost minimal, you know, yeah. in some ways. And uh, so we linked up with him with this with this this killer tune called uh thrill seeker and uh awesome. it's 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 dope uh, we're, we're super excited for this one to come out that's cool yeah i yeah. um definitely like the more minimal vibe so i'll uh, i'll personally make sure to check that out as well but yeah right on man yeah 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 man that's awesome do you um have uh in terms of like longer term next six to 12 months what what are the kind of overarching plans for black caviar well, you know, it's just trying to get back in the loop of like, and hoping that we, you know, we, things don't lock down again or something, you know, it's like, yeah, just this like looming fear that like, oh no, we're going to go back to what it was. But, uh, oh, man. yeah, you know, it's like, just try to try to play shows and keep writing music, you know, and just trying to look for cons, always looking for new talent and looking new vocalists, new people to collaborate yeah. with um so you know it's just it's just keeping that going and and just trying to write good tunes you know tunes that people Mm -hmm. hopefully enjoy and hopefully uh yeah play play a lot of shows man yeah totally definitely i think everyone's itching to get back out there and play shows right now i know i am (laughs) it's uh yeah crazy man crazy yeah and and the the, the shows that i've done have just been amazing you know just there's a lot of people Mm -hmm. that are just you know i I mean like me addicted like you addicted to music and need it. And, and it, yeah. it's, 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 it's a lifeline for us, mm. you know? And I think that's one thing that the, the pandemic really did was like, um, it showed us like how much we need music and mm. how much we need togetherness and, yes. to, and that, that unity that, that mm. house music does that. Uh, yeah. You know, I mean, music brings people together, but I don't know, man, there's just something special about house music that just, it just touches your soul, you know? And it just, it's this soul connection with everybody there. And uh, 
you know, I'm sure you, you meet people, you know, like I, I know I do this in the, you know, they'll, you'll, they'll be like, oh, I'm, you know, what kind of music can you do? And you're like, oh, I'm really into house music. And you're yeah. like, yep, we're going to be friends. I know, <laughs> like, like we're cool, you know? So it's like, it's, it's such a great, a great thing to have that, you know, we're, we're so, we're so blessed to, to have house music, you know? That's awesome, man. I think everyone, like, if everyone's honest, everyone, everyone deep down likes house music. Like, even if you say, like, oh, I don't really like house music, when you're in, like, a club or something like that, you'll start dancing. Like, <laughs> yeah. Or you're, you're in, like, a, like, a, like a, a, you know, sometimes you'll be in, like, a, somewhere shopping and they'll have, like, you know, just some house music on or, like, you know, deep house music on. Yeah. Like, it's just, it's just, it just, it's there and it just makes you feel good. Like, you know, yeah. just those chords and that, that beat and that, that groove, you know, like when it's got a sick groove, like, oh man, like mm. there's not much better than that, you know? I feel like that's why there was a bit of a resurgence of kind of like, cause I feel like there's this whole like lo-fi hip hop trend that kind of popped up in the last few years. I feel like then that kind of oozed over into house music as well, just cause it like that lo-fi house kind of trend. Cause it, it really kind of fit that, that, that vibe as well it just you know obviously influenced by a lot of the old school chicago deep stuff as well like it's it's just a vibe man it's uh it is yeah it's good music I'm, I'm with you, bro. yeah love i love it well. love yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> Uh, awesome, man. Sweet as well. I have one last question for you. Um, and this is someone, something rather, not someone. <laughs> I ask every person who comes on. Um, and yeah, it's a bit of a hard question to answer. So feel free to like take your time or you can answer this however you like. Because basically, as you know, DJs and producers and artists, as we grow, we all learn from mistakes we make. And, um, you know, they shape us into the people we are today. But if there's if you had a time machine and there's one thing you could go back and change that you did, what do you think that would be? Oh man, yeah, that's a tough one. Mm. Um, I probably, I probably would go back and have more extensive musical training. Sure. I think I would go back and try to learn other instruments and yeah. um, because, you know, that's, I, I, I growing up and playing in bands and, you know, I was always a drummer or I, I was a vocalist. So sure. I played bass a little bit, you know, and, but bass is, you know, in, in like a, a hardcore band is very simple. You know, you're just following like root notes and just yeah. kind of grooving along with the guitar. So you know, like I, I would have loved to have studied that a little bit deeper, like actual music, music theory, understanding it better as, a, but, you know, at the same time, you know, so, I don't know, does that clog up, you know, when you write music like this and it's, it's, it's so about feeling, you know, I, I knew very amazing technical musicians that just did not know how to play with any feeling. So, yeah. You know, like where they understand, well, you do this here and this goes to here and this goes to there, but like, you know, just sitting back and just finding a groove and finding like, so I don't know, but I, yeah, I guess it would be if I had to go back and change one thing, it would just have, um, a, a deeper education in, yeah. in music and learning how to play other instruments. Mm. Yeah. You did touch on something really interesting there as well, because um, I think that's f something I would like l have liked to have done, like learned piano earlier on, like which is such a versatile instrument. Um, I kind of learned self taught it a bit later, but you know, for production, yeah. like a lot of us have, you know, learned yeah. how to how chords are made Just and get that. Kind it. Of yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but I do see. Yeah, you're right. Some some like you know musicians who've grown up in a classical sense who definitely like kind of reduce the things they're playing just to like the concepts. I think even if you learn those things, which is important, I think it's important also not to like lose the effect that that has musically, like not to just be like, Oh, that's a C minor chord, you know, like to be like, no, that's a mood. And it's a thing. Um, I think a few people have been, who've been coming on the podcast recently have been mentioning this. So it's like definitely important to have the rules, but also know that it's not just a note. It's a, feeling it's a vibe feeling very yeah. much so yes exactly yeah. and not lose yeah. that perspective even if you become you know it's some some genius in terms of music theory um yeah and yeah. and there, there are guys that do it i mean you know skrillex you know coming back to him i mean he's a musical genius i mean he's yeah. he's and he's able to know 
where does where things need to sit and where things need to go and how yeah. far you push something or you cut back. I mean, he's just such an incredible producer. But yeah, that's a that's a very good example of somebody that I think found the balance of both. Awesome, man. That's so cool. Um, great, man. Well, this has been super fun. Thank you so much for jumping on. Yeah, man. Thank you so much for asking me. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Um, lastly, just um, on in terms of socials and stuff like that, so people can check out your music, where can people find you online? Uh, Real Black Caviar on all yep. social media and then just Black Caviar on, on you know, uh, Spotify, Apple Music and yeah, that's all. It's easy, pretty easy to find. Sweet, man. And I'll leave links to all of those um, releases that have just come out as well. So um, people can go check those out. Um, awesome. but yeah, man, hope you enjoy the rest of your evening. Thanks, bro. I hope you have enjoy the rest of your morning. Thank you. <laughs> what, what I gotta do.